Well, good morning and welcome back to the program today. We're thankful that you have joined us and we just appreciate you taking time this morning to listen. I know that you have been blessed the last two weeks by listening to Robin Kirby Gata. I know that she has ministered a great and a powerful word into your life if you've gotten to hear that. And if not, then uh, you can find Robin on our YouTube channel by searching for Defining Moments with Evangelist Lynn Taylor. And her pro- her program will probably be there. If not, it will be there shortly. And there are so many other ones that you can pick from and listen to. And I know and am positive that you will receive a blessing from the testimonies that have been uploaded there. And we just want to invite you to contact us and let us know if this program has been a blessing to you at Lynn Team Ministries at AOL.com and you can connect with me there through email or visit our Facebook page and it's uh, simply Defining Moments radio station <clears throat> excuse me and you can uh, find a page there and find some inspiration and just have some uh, little mini sermons there you know I hate to call any sermon a mini sermon because every sermon and message is powerful and you can be ministered to there as well. And we just are delighted that you've come along beside of us and want to be a part of this ministry. And we just ask you to uh, continue to tell your friends and your loved ones about this program. And if the Lord has delivered you, brought you through a hard place and a trying time, and you have a testimony you'd like to share, contact me at those um contact uh, information that I gave you earlier at that. And, and we'll get together and we'll talk. And We'll see what the Lord has in store, and maybe you can be uh, one of my guests right here on Defining Moments. And this morning, before we go into the Word, I'd like to just go to the Lord in prayer. And so, whatever your need is, whatever your situation in life is right now, I just want you to uh, dare to believe God to change that and to touch you and heal you or your situation. Maybe you've got children that have been incarcerated and you're just crying out to the Lord for them to be changed and delivered. I want you to know that there is nothing impossible with God. Now God may have them there for a little while to work some things out in their life but if you'll allow God, God can change that person. He can change that heart and he can do great and mighty things in their life and when they come out of there they'll be different people and so this morning I just want to just let's pray together for each and every need. Father we just thank you this morning morning that that you sit high and you look down low that heaven is your throne and the earth is lord it's just your footstool it's just where you prop up and so lord you've got everything in control we worry and we fret but today we just choose to cast all our cares and our anxieties upon you knowing that you care for us and lord we just thank you that you heal that you deliver that you work out in lives what needs to be worked out and that you will do god what what only you can do, and that is transform hearts and lives, Father. We just pray that you meet each and every need, give jobs where jobs are needed. We decree increase, and we decree, Father, that you will just open the windows of heaven for your people, and that we will prosper, even as our soul prospers. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, I just want to talk to you for a little bit. And I want to read some out of the scriptures today to you. I haven't been uh, with you in a, several weeks, and I just felt the Lord would have me share something with you today. You know, our program is usually encouraging or testimonies or just a word to tell you how much Jesus loves you and what he wants to do in your life. And, and we definitely believe that. But this morning, I just kind of felt the wind of the Spirit change just a little. And some things that I just feel like the Lord wants to say to you. But keep in mind when you hear this. The reason he sends a word to you is because he loves you and because he wants his word to impact and change your life. And so this morning, I'm going to read to you out of the book of Exodus, <clears throat> excuse me, chapter 8. So, and I'm going to read out of the Amplified Version here, just simply to make it a little more understandable for those that might not be familiar with the Bible. And then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go so they may serve me. And if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite your entire land with frogs. The river shall swarm with frogs, which shall go up 
and come into your house, into your bedchamber, and on your bed, and into your houses, the houses of your servants, and upon your people, and into your ovens, and your kneading bowls, and your dough. And the frog shall come upon you, and on your people, and all your servants. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your rod over the rivers, and streams, and canals, and over the pools, and cause frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land. But when the magicians did see this, they did the same thing with their enchantments and secret arts, and brought up more frogs upon the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and my people, and I will let the people go that they may sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses says to Pharaoh, Glory over me in this. In other words, he's saying, You set the time. You tell me what time you want me to do this. He says, You dictate when I shall pray to the Lord for you, your servants, and your people, that the frogs may be destroyed from you and your house and remain only in the river. And Pharaoh said, Tomorrow. And Moses said, Let it be as you say, that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from you and your houses and from your servants and your people, and they shall remain in the river. <clears throat> I just want to talk to you about this for a few minutes. I find this story quite amazing on several several different levels. And one of the things is we have, uh, first of all, I want to tell you what I'd like to just kind of put a title to this message. And it would be simply entitled Sleeping with Frogs. Now, we have Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and he has refused to let God's people leave bondage. And so God brings a number of plagues into Egypt. And we'll just kind of briefly summarize some of them. Well, first it was blood in the Nile, their source of life. Uh, there were frogs in everything. Then there were these blood-sucking mosquitoes called gadflies that would come in and, and bite people. Their livestock died from disease. Darkness covered Egypt. There were sore boils that came up on them. There were hail and fire that rained down from heaven and it killed everything and everyone that was in the field. Locusts came and ate up their crops. And then there was the final plague of death of the firstborn of Egypt. It also would have been the firstborn of Israel had they not obeyed the commandments of the Lord. But here we have all these dreaded plagues, all these terrible things that came upon Egypt. But the one I want to focus on today is the frogs. And the reason why is because I believe that there are frogs that still remain among many today. Now you say, what, what do I mean by that? Well, let me tell you what frogs represent. Frogs represent falsities, lies, something against the truth or uncleanness. Now these frogs remain among people's lives today. And these frogs came into Egypt, and just get this picture in your mind. They're everywhere. I want to go back and just kind of reread uh, verses 2 and 4. It says that if you refuse, we're going to go on down a little bit, I will smite your entire land with frogs. He says the river will swarm with, fr with frogs. And they will go into your houses, into your bedchamber, on your bed, into your house, the houses of your servants and upon your people, and into your ovens and your kneading bowls and your dough. Frogs shall come upon you and your people and your servants. Now, I don't know about you, but I am not a fan of frogs. I'm not scared of a frog. I don't run in terror when I see a frog. Matter of fact, some of the little, some of the little guys are somewhat kind of cute. But I don't want a frog on my body. I don't want these little green frogs that stick to the glass. You know what I'm talking about. I don't want them on me. Can you imagine being in an environment 
where you cannot even take a step. Because if you do, what are you going to step on? You're going to step on a frog. You're going to have frogs in your bed at night when you go to sleep. You're going to have frogs in your soup, frogs in your kitchen, frogs, he says, in your kneading bowls where they make their bread. There were frogs everywhere. Now get that picture. I don't know about you, but I would kind of be uncomfortable with frogs everywhere. So finally, Pharaoh comes to Moses and he asks him to please, please go to God and ask him to take these frogs away from us. And so Moses looks at Pharaoh and he says, you name your time. You name when you want these frogs to go. Now let me tell you something. If that had been me, I think that I would have looked at Moses and I'd said, okay, right now. What about right now, Moses? I am tired of these frogs. I'm tired of dealing with all this. We can't turn around. We can't go to bed. We're, we're sleeping with frogs. We're eating with frogs. We're bathing with frogs. Everything we do, the River Nile is full of frogs. I would like to see them go now. But what did Pharaoh say? Pharaoh said, tomorrow. Tomorrow, Moses. Tomorrow, come and pray that God will take the frogs away from us. Now, that sounds kind of foolish. Doesn't that sound kind of strange? The only reason that you wouldn't want him to do it right then would be, I guess, you just really like frogs. See, and I'm beginning to think that some of people, even God's people, like frogs. That we enjoy having them around. That we hope they'll just stick around and stick through the glass and we like to hear them croak and make their noises. You say, that's ridiculous. Is it? Is it really? Well, there are some listening to me today that you have pampered frogs way too long in your life. See, frogs represent, I'm going to say it again, falsities, lies, anything against the truth, uncleanness. Some of you keep thinking that if you just hold on a little while longer, if you just put up with the frogs one more night, if you just sleep with these frogs in your life just one more night, then they're just going to magically disappear. But I'm here to tell you they're not just going to disappear. Pharaoh could have stomped his feet. He could have thrown frogs against the windows. He could have done a number of things, but it took divine intervention to get rid of these frogs. Aaron went out and he called the frogs out, out of a divine order. He called the frogs upon the land as a punishment, as a plague. And then it took the same God that brought them in to take them away. See, so many of God's people, so many people in general put up with things for far too long. We want to say that we want things to change. But we want it to change on our schedule and on our clock. Tomorrow, just like Pharaoh says, well, God fixed it for Moses to put the ball in Pharaoh's court. God said, okay, Moses, when you want, uh, or to Pharaoh, when do you want these frogs to leave Egypt? And I'm sure Pharaoh's probably not just really taking a whole lot of thought into this thing because in reality, I am sure he did not want to sleep with frogs again one more night. I'm sure that he would have liked to sat down at his big fine table and eaten without frogs hopping all over his food. I'm sure that if he had really thought that thing through, he would have said, Moses, let's get rid of them now. But he didn't. Moses said, glory over me in this, in verse 9. Or you decide when you're ready for the frogs to go back into the river. And so Pharaoh decides he's going to sleep with the frogs one more night. Well, Scripture says in 2 Corinthians 6 and 2, For God says, At just the right time I heard you. On the day of salvation I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Let me tell you that today... God is calling for some of you listening to the sound of my voice that today you need to get rid of these frogs. 
Today is the day that you need to say, Lord, I'm tired of living with these frogs. I want salvation today. I'm tired of living with the drugs. I'm tired of living with the alcohol. I'm tired of living with the sex addictions. I'm tired of living with pornography. I'm tired of living, Lord, like I'm a Christian. And Monday through Saturday, I'm living like the devil. I am tired of this. God wants to bring you to a place where he can get the frogs out of your life. Let me ask you a question. Are you tired of sleeping with the frogs? Now, ladies, I'm not talking about your husband, okay? But no man, the man that you're in a biblical covenant with is not the man I'm talking about, or just men in general. But a lot of, a lot of times I've had women that would call me up and say, Oh, Sister Lynn, God has sent me the best man. He has sent me a man of God. And you go on to talk in a few minutes, you find out this man of God that God has sent them is married. He's got a wife. Maybe some of these women even have a husband that have said that. Let me tell you something right now, sisters and brothers alike. Those are frogs. It is not the truth. It is a deceptive lie of the enemy because God's not going to go against his word. For you, he's not going to go against his word for me. If you're sleeping with a man that's not your husband, this may sound funny, but you're sleeping with a frog. And no matter how many times you kiss him, he is not going to turn into a handsome prince. You say, how can you say that? I can say that because it is the word. God will not go against his word. It's a falsity that the enemy has brought into your life. He's a frog or she's a frog. If it's a man or if it's a woman, it doesn't matter. Now, don't turn your radio off. The reason I say don't turn your radio off is so you've already heard the truth. Now, you're going to be held accountable for this truth. And this is the kind of truth that we need to get across to one another so that we can live the lives that God has called us to live, to bring us back and to right relationship with him, to bring us back so we can have productive and effective ministries so that we can realize that God has something so much better for us than dealing with the frogs that are in our lives. Some of you, you need a man or a woman to validate your worth. That's what defines you. That's what gives you your value. But Jesus Christ will validate your worth. He already did that when he looked through the eons of time and knew that you would be born. And he said, I'm going to the cross for him or for her so that I can prove their worth and value. People don't die for folks that have no worth or value. You say, well, I'm just lost. I don't I don't know where I'm going. I'm just lost. And I'm telling you right now, I'm showing you the way and giving you some direction so that you don't have to keep sleeping with frogs. Some have slept with spiritual frogs in your walk with the Lord. You, you're, you're bound by fear. And fear is this. It is false evidence appearing real. You haven't stepped out into your ministry because of the lies or the frogs that are coming against your mind. The lie that women can't do certain things in ministry. Let me tell you right now, those are frogs. I want to give you an acronym of what frogs really can be broke down into. F-R-O-G. F is for fearful. R is for rebellious. O is objection to, and G is God. Fearful, rebellious objection to God. Frogs, falsities, lies that people swallow to keep them from God's best for their lives. Finally, Pharaoh's heart changed. He said, okay, go, sacrifice to your God. Just get these frogs away from us. Just drive these frogs back into the river. 
We don't want anything else to do with these frogs. Just take care of them. And the moment they were gone, his heart was hardened again. And you can read through the book of Exodus what happened behind the frogs. When we continuously harden our heart against the word of the Lord, it only opens the door for more things to come in. Whatever the frogs are in your life, whether they're sin, whether it's worry, worry cancels out faith. You say, I have, fo- yeah, I have faith. I have so much faith that God will do this certain thing. But you worry about it all the time. Your worry is canceling out your faith. Grab a hold of that faith. The substance of things and the evidence of things. That even though you can't see them with your natural eye, they exist. You know, the Bible says that the worlds were framed by faith when there was nothing. God is an expert of creating something out of nothing. But he wants to get these frogs out of our lives and so he can be effectively working in and through us. So we may be effective ministers. Most every woman that has been on this program has had frogs in her life at some point. I've had them in my life at some point. And I've had to go to God and they've had to go to God and say, we don't want these frogs. We don't want these falsities. We don't want to believe these lies anymore. We want to be set free. We want you to drive those things out from us. We want deliverance. We want to be set free from the bondages that we have been held in. And today, you are no different. There are women listening to me today. That you're no different. You're no different from the other women that have been on this program. And I just feel like that I need to say this to somebody this morning. That the frogs you're allowing to live in your life or in your home or your bed. They're not going to change. If they won't change for God. If they won't change for themselves. They're not going to change for you. How many people have swallowed the lie? Well, if I can just get them to change, everything will be better. Sister, brother, you're not going to be able to change anybody. It takes the blood of Jesus, the redemptive power of the cross, of the Holy Spirit, and a vessel that is willing and says, I want a change in my life. You can pray them through. You can pray for them. But you cannot change them. Don't wait. Call upon the Lord today. Cry out to the Lord. And see what God will do in your life. This word isn't to bring anybody into condemnation. This word isn't to destroy relationships or to hurt people this word is to tell you god's got something better for you god has a work for you to do and you can't do it in a house full of frogs you say oh you telling me to get rid of my kids no 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 don't don't go get rid of your kids all the lord is saying is that he wants you to be willing not to spend another night with the frogs in your life that you have been dealing with That today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of the Lord. Today is the day for you to call upon him and say, Lord, I want these plagues, these things, these sins, these people even out of my life that are pulling me down. These friends that are constantly pulling me back into sin. These friends that every time I call them for help, their answer is, let's go out and drink. I'm telling you, those are frogs in your life. Things that you need to separate yourself from. You say, you have no idea what you're talking about. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Because there's situations and circumstances in each one of our lives when we have to separate ourselves from the bad, from the frogs, from the things that have lied to us, from the things that have pulled us away from God's best in our life. From the things that keep getting in all of our stuff. These frogs were everywhere. But you know what kind of caught my eye here? Is he told Pharaoh, he said, they're not just going to be on you. They're going to be on your people. 
The decisions you make today, the way you choose to walk today is going to affect your children tomorrow. The things and the choices you make today, whether that child is just has just come home from the hospital or that child has grown, that child is watching your life. And the decisions you make are going to affect their life for generations to come. And so this morning, my prayer, my call to you is just repent. Turn. Walk away from those things. That, that's simply what repentance means is to turn around, have a change of heart, and walk away from those things that have pulled you down. Walk away from those frogs. Walk away from those things that you've been involved with. Those things and those people that have pulled you down. Get out of that relationship that's not pure and holy. And believe God that if that person is meant to be in your life, that God will make it happen. I'm not talking about these lies and these false relationships. But I'm talking about that mind and will of God that brings all beautiful things together. I know a woman that has prayed for several years for the Lord to bring her a spouse. And here just recently she was engaged. And I can tell you today that she will say she thanks God that she's waited and that she didn't settle for some frog out there. You say, boy, you're on it today calling people frogs. No. Look at this from a spiritual standpoint. Things that would lie to you. Things that will pull you into bondage. Things that will make you sick. Things that the enemy would love to use to destroy you. See, he comes to do three things. And that is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I also know one other thing. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And he wants to destroy those things that have come to destroy you. So this morning, turn your eyes toward him. And let's just pray one more time. Father, thank you that you love us enough that you send your word to rid our lives of the things that would come to deceive us, trick us into making mistakes, and that would lead us in a way that is not pleasing to you. And so this morning, we just lay it all down. And we ask that you cleanse us, purify us, and make us whole, that we may be yours indeed and rid our lives of everything, Lord, that is fearful, rebellious, and in objection to you. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And remember this, when you realize just how much Jesus Christ loves you, you will then experience your greatest defining moment.